When you look at any image on a screen, whether it's a selfie, a movie scene, or a YouTube thumbnail, what you're actually seeing is a collection of tiny dots. These dots are called pixels. If you zoom into any digital image, you'll start to see these pixels clearly. Imagine zooming in so much that the smooth lines turn into tiny squares. Each of those squares is one pixel. On their own, a pixel doesn't show you the whole picture. But when thousands or millions of them are arranged together, in the form of a grid, they create detailed, colorful images. And here's the cool part. Each pixel has a color. That color is represented by numbers inside the computer. So yes, every image you see on your phone or laptop is actually made up of numbers. Let's take this simple black and white image that shows the number 4 inside a 10 by 10 grid. Since it's a grayscale image, each pixel in this 10 by 10 grid has a brightness value between 0 and 255. The number 0 means completely black. The number 255 means pure white. And anything in between is some shade of gray. For example, a pixel with the number 128 will look like medium gray. To convert this image into a matrix, we just replace every pixel with its corresponding number. The result is a 10 by 10 matrix where each number represents the brightness or the intensity of one pixel. Also, to simplify the matrix, we divide every pixel value by 255 and normalize it. This way, black becomes zero, white becomes one, and anything in between becomes a shade of gray. It makes calculations smoother and easier to visualize. Now that we have the matrix, we can actually start doing some really cool things with it. For example, we can try to blur the image so that the edges become softer and smoother. Or we can try to find the edges, that is, where black and white regions meet. And we can even try to sharpen the image, which makes the lines and details more bold and crisp. All of these are different kinds of effects we can apply to our image. And believe it or not, all of them can be done just by using a small matrix called a kernel. A kernel, also called a filter or mask, is just a small matrix, usually three by three, that we use to change the way an image looks. Let me explain how this works step by step. You take the kernel and place it on the top left corner of the image matrix. You multiply each number in the kernel with the pixel value that lies right under it. For example, the matrix inside this blue box is this matrix. So first, we multiply this first element of this image matrix with the first element of this kernel matrix, then second element of this image matrix with the second element of this kernel matrix, then third with third, and so on. Then, you add up all these multiplied values. That final number becomes the new pixel value in a new output matrix. After that, you move the kernel one pixel to the right and repeat the same steps. You keep sliding it across the whole image, row by row. And this process continues until every pixel is recalculated. This sliding and calculating process is called convolution. Let's take the blur effect first. For that, we use a kernel where every number is 1 divided by 9. That is, we treat all neighboring pixels equally and simply take their average. Look at the output matrix after we apply this kernel. You'll see that in the grayscale matrix, the values between 0 and 1 starts to even out. The high and low values mix with each other and everything becomes more similar, making the image look softer and slightly grayish overall. There is another type of kernel for blur called Gaussian blur that gives more importance to the center pixel and less to the ones around it. This creates a more natural looking blur, like how our eyes actually see things out of focus. In this kernel, the center value is highest and the values get smaller as you move outward. Now, if we want to find the edges, we use a different kind of kernel one that checks how different the center pixel is from its surroundings. One example looks like this. 
all outer values are minus 1 and the center is 8. When you apply this kernel, it highlights areas where there's a sudden change, like a white pixel suddenly turning black, which means an edge. Lastly, if we want to sharpen the image, we use a kernel that gives more weight to the center pixel and subtracts some of the influence of the neighboring pixels. This makes the contrast stronger and the image looks more bold. I have written a simple Python code that does exactly what we just learned. First, it works on a small image, like the 10 by 10 image of number four, so you can clearly see how the pixel values change step by step. Then, the same code is used on a real life image, like a photo from your phone, and you can instantly see the effects. The blurred version looks soft and smooth, the sharpened one looks crisp, and the edge detected one shows the outlines clearly. To take things even further, in case of edge detection, I used something called the Sobel Edge Detection Kernel, which is great for catching both vertical and horizontal edges. The code first turns the image into grayscale, applies the Sobel filters to highlight the edges, and then combines them to get a clean edge map. After that, I created a version where all the edges are outlined in black, almost like a drawing over the original photo. We can use the same idea of convolution to perform image recognition by detecting patterns like edges, curves, or shapes. This is exactly how convolutional neural networks, or CNN, work in computer vision to recognize faces, objects, and even handwriting. If this video gets 10,000 likes, then I will make another amazing video on a similar application of math in real life. So good!